my van on my way to the mechanics. I feel like my van's been in hibernation mode. So good to be driving on a like a sunny day in the van. I'm looking forward to taking my van to the mechanic to see what exactly is the problem to be able to fix it before I leave for my big trip. I hate having a van and not being able to use it, like being full time in the van in the city sucks like i really don't like the lifestyle of just going back and forth from the van and not being in the van like traveling with the van so that's something that i really really have valued with my time when the van was running well is by being able to escape the city and being in my own space being able to drive whenever i want being able to do things whenever i want so yeah i need to just persevere through now for the next the next few weeks oh, and like I'm not sleeping at night I can't get up at all like like I'm just trying to sleep my way through the city van life just because I hate it so much and like the feeling of how I feel in comparison to the way I was in Whitby I feel so much more stressed in the city like so much more stressed, sleep deprived, not feeling like I want to go gym, not feeling like, I'm just feeling like just can't be bothered, hermit mode, run away, that type of vibe. I hate this part of life, dealing with stuff. We will see what the mechanic has to say today, hopefully, hopefully. And can I tell you that it feels good to be in this van driving it. Oh, I miss driving. Like all my problems go away when I'm in the van. Obviously, because basically I feel like a hot mess at the minute. I don't know what my day structure is like. I don't know how to function right now. I am coasting, to say the least, in the most un- like I just don't even feel human anymore to be honest with you I just feel like extraterrestrial at this point my van they have to keep overnight which sucks for me so I'll be losing more sleep tonight because that's the way I live my life tomorrow by tomorrow I'll find out exactly how much this is gonna cost me what did they find because at the end of the day I need to know like what else he's doing and I said to him now, I'm like, I don't know if I'm being a hypochondriac because first, second and third gear feel rough. Fourth gear feels like smooth, which before it never used to be so highlighted. The mobilizer thing, like I said before, and then that's basically it. I just said something just feels funny at the bottom. I don't know what it is. If I'm staying in here, that can only be one thing. It's time for a van update. I am in a hotel room, but this is not something I could afford. This was gifted to me tonight and I am beyond grateful. Yeah, I am exhausted. I am drained. I am a lot of emotions. Well, we might as well just give you a room tour. This is the Citrus Hotel in um, Cardiff. And this is me. And this is like one of the last rooms available, which is pretty cool. And it's like literally two minutes away from my co-working space, which is super ideal because I've got like a big day tomorrow. Um, so king size bed, which is just basically twin beds pushed together. And actually, when I went to book, because I asked him for a bath, because I just want to have a bath. Like, I just want a bath. So I could just relax and de-stress. De um, I didn't book the twin room before. And then this king came up, so... On the top floor, so it was ideal. Um, TV. Like, nearly 360 view of Cardiff. Which is just awesome it's like metaphorical look at the horizons to like a bird's eye view and 
yeah, I'm so tired, I can't talk. Another mirror. And then, bathroom. Most importantly, bath. Yes, please. Okay, so let's talk. This is the update that everybody's been waiting for, that I've been avoiding <laughs> because of money. So let's go back to a few videos ago where I failed my van MOT and then passed my van MOT. I was stuck in a similar situation where I didn't have accommodation and the hostels here suck. After I drove my van from the mechanics, I was like, hmm, something feels weird. And if you follow me on my Instagram, you would see live updates of what's been happening. And I got literally, I think two days after I was at the mechanic, my van started playing up with locking, starting, and it was, I knew it was an immobilized issue because before the summer where I broke down in Swindon, it was also immobilizer prompt and then the battery. So I got stuck in the little car, little car park. I had a recovery truck come because the AA are shocking. And then eventually the proper AA guy came and he was like he just lifted up my hood of the van like literally just lifted this plastic thing to see if you could see the electrics and then he's like actually this is loose so he's like right um let's try to start it it's started so in his case he's like well it's fixed he doesn't want to really fiddle about to make it worse and then he drove like i drove back to my car parking space and that was that and then I had to call my mechanics. My appointment was only yesterday I could get booked in. I don't have the money for this, okay? <laughs> like, I didn't have the money for it because I just spent 600 pounds with this van and I've been hustling because I'm self-employed now and the, the money coming into my account hasn't been as fast as it's gone out. I have been working towards basically my self-employment, my summer, what I'm going to do for the summer because again, if you saw in a previous video, I said that I really want to have, to get away from the city, I want to be safe in my van, I want to live in my van properly. So between that breakdown till now, I have been literally just going to, from my van back to my co-working space, van co-working space, and my van is just to sleep at night and then come back. But but in the city, I'm not sleeping. I'm going to bed four o'clock. I'm sometimes going to bed five o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I'm going to bed one o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I'm like, it's just all over the place because my van is just there in the car parking space. It can't move because I'm too scared to move it. And I have to make sure that you have to be stuffed, all the stuff. And the reason why I'm doing this video is because like there is this amazing side to van life which you have but damn when it comes to financial hardship and when it comes to city van life it's just the worst in my opinion. Yesterday when I was driving my van I was like man I feel so good to have my van back but being in the city I just hate it. I hate it so much. The point is I need to be able to get the van ready for May when I have the job to start in the summer, which is gonna help my mental well-being. I'm gonna be able to enjoy my van. I'm gonna enjoy my summer, work from the van. And in the meantime, between now and when I go, I need to hustle my business to be able to work remote, set up all my foundations properly because I've got two clients I'm dealing with. Cash flow is a massive issue. So I'm in a pickle. I'm in a big pickle, financial pickle. And I know I'll be out of this financial pickle maybe in like May, June, maybe June. Because I'll be working on the campsite and stuff and my clients, I'll be having an ongoing income coming in and blah, blah, blah. Everything will be set up. So it's just the now. It's between the March and the May that it was always going to be a problem. And unfortunately, this problem became worse from the outcome of yesterday. So this comes to the present moment of this video. Mechanics. Uh, I dropped the van at the mechanics. 
I left and literally not even two hours later, they called me saying, Tasha, the van won't even start. And I was like, exactly, exactly why I didn't want to drive it. And what's happened is, is that they had to get an electrician in and the electrician said this immobilizer needs removing. They need to also get another specialist in. So because of the two specialists and the three hours labor, the total price comes to 474 pounds, which is basically 500 pounds. That's without even looking at my gears, which I, these are the two main things with my van is gears and the immobilizer. It has to be done. It just, it's just life. Okay. It's just typical life and it's draining me. I am just so done with all of this. Like I'm ready for my summer of being in the campsite, working, being awesome. And that's just it. <laughs> okay, let's just talk about finance. Um, so they said to me, Tasha, it's gonna cost you this, and guess what? You can't get your van till Monday. I'm like, oh, typical. I don't have that 400 pounds, 500 pounds. I don't have a place to stay, and I'm screwed. I'm literally screwed. And I'm exhausted. I had to stay mostly awake yesterday because I was like, oh, I can stay awake for tomorrow. Like, cause I'm, I was expecting to get my van back. I was expecting, okay, cool, we're gonna work on this. The electrician is going to work on it. It's going to be like 150, 200 quid. I can pay now. And then 200 pounds, I can pay for my gears next month, you know, the beginning of May. No, it's obviously big chunk here, big chunk there. I've got no money coming. Like I've got only little money coming in. So I'm like on panic mode, beyond panic mode. Still going to do van life, but I need a place to stay in the city. Also, I've got my business because my business side of it, I've got a great opportunity, co-working space, really kicking off, like all of that side of life is really, really awesome. But this side of life of like my homestead, and I've been discussing this on many venue, um, videos before, it's just a lot, it's a lot of stress. And you can't live in the city when you're struggling, like you, you need to be able to switch off. I can't be at the co-working space 18 hours a day and just go crash in the van, like it's just not good. And, you know, the summers, the, the weather's not here where you can sit outside, go sit in the park, you know what I mean? So, it's been a lot. So, I went to the housing association. First time going, really nice experience. I'm going tomorrow again as well. And then I have applied for universal credit um, to support me through this hardship. Before, I never thought of because I was so... I was, my mindset has just been so warped by life. Like, there's just a lot been going on in my life. And now, I email, message, um, asking for the emergency fund, because I apparently can get like emergency fund. Because like, my money's not gonna come till later. And if they can give me like 500 pounds, or whatever the case might be, then at least that can pay off the van, and I can get the van back. And, I have a place to stay. I called from the housing. I told them I'm living in my van. They said that they can like have outreach people come look at me for safety reasons. I'm like, look, I just don't want to be in a worse scenario than what I'm in. I like my space, it's clean. I don't want to be surrounded by people like, like you get different types of homeless people and it's no disrespect to the homeless because I technically am. It's more, I don't want to be surrounded by fear and bad habits, bad choices, bad all of that, because I've overcome that, yeah. I'm not in that zone. And it's not good for my mental well being. So I said they I called the emergency um shelter places and they like, oh, you can come at six o'clock and see a social worker, they can then Put you into a hostel if you've got a space to stay or like a bed sit or whatever the place is and then um that's if there's space available for you so you have to go every night and not guaranteed that that sucks like i'm not gonna do that like i would do it 
but then I asked them, so can I just ask you what can I expect? And they're like, well, it's mixed women and male and it's a like room full of beds. Bro, I don't want to be like laying there, I'm exhausted, going, is anybody going to try it on with me? Is anybody going to try to pickpocket me? Do you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you've got a big bunch of people that are surviving out there. And when you take things away from people, people become desperate. It's just no disrespect to them. It's just, I know how the story goes. I don't need to be in that space. I'm just, I put up a post on Facebook and I just, I just, I just needed to surrender the energy because it's getting to a point now where I'm, but I know it's not going to be for long. Again, I know because I've been working towards it. I've been getting opportunities. I've been so grateful and you know what i want to just give a massive shout out to the van life community like the person who helped me with this room i'm just so grateful to you you know who you are i don't need to like that's between us i'm just happy to be able to be here right now so i could just sleep because guess what tomorrow i have to work at the end of the day i still have to work i still have to continue my journey and work and i can't concentrate if i'm drained you know and I love what I'm doing. I want to show the energy towards that. I want to just keep like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be supervising volunteers next week. I need to make sure that I'm organized. You know, I've got to be there for my sister this weekend. It's just, it's just so much. So this is just a safe place for me to just breathe. So yeah, that's my update and I'm gonna go take a bath, get into bed and sleep. I wanted to say a massive shout out to everybody that's obviously DM me. You're just incredible. Why am I sharing this? Because I don't know, I feel like my van life experience is just so <laughs> so emotional. Like people will say to me, Oh, why didn't you rent in the beginning? Well, firstly, I was a student no money couldn't get any benefit my mum passed away and my headspace was screwed so the best thing that I could do at the time was get the van and I know I needed work I did what I did in my best ability I am getting I'm taking the steps to get myself out of my situation I'm just building up my my business I have a part-time job coming up for the summer which is great I needed to go to Whitby to detach from this van business and just feel like I'm getting some wholesome goodness from like just I needed love to be honest and that's what I got I got to spend time with my sister in Easter so it all happened the way it happened and now I'm in a point where it's just sorting out housekeeping but honestly I didn't I didn't expect this to be where I'm now. And what's annoying me is that I'm paying for AA insurance. Technically, this is a breakdown thing, but I don't get it because it wasn't roadside assistance. So I personally want to change my AA or get like find insurance thing where if my van breaks down or it's at the garage and it breaks down, I need a place to stay. And it's been taken care of so i'm not in the situation again so i've learned my lessons from this situation because this is not the second time tomorrow i've got a meeting with universal credit then with housing so hopefully there's some positive news from that at this stage any help will do i'm just a bit worried financially about bills basic needs yet again how do i eat where do i sleep and I think to myself, like, I'm 32 years old. How am I here? It's just tough doing it alone. But what's even really good is that I'm not really alone. I've got amazing support from my co-working space where everybody feeds me love. And then I've got amazing people that like watch this channel that like send me their love in like certain ways 
I would never have got that job for the summer if it wasn't for Simon who tagged me and who just listens and everybody listens so yeah I just want to say thank you because by me doing this I'm not alone by me like sharing my my challenges be in this position right now you know like before 2020 I was saving paying my debts and trying to be a better person realizing like I need to grow up I need to take responsibility and ever since that day where everything just when everything got taken away from me and then my mother got taken away from me I was like I'm gonna work my ass off so that I am responsible and just as, as soon as I'm getting somewhere it's just like you know that like push and pull so yeah it's just all a big journey but moments like this I'm grateful warm bed to sleep in warm bath I'm blessed regardless. Completely your way right now. Lighting's super bad in here, but it's just so nice to be clean, to relax. I'm having some wine. I got given like this really small bottle of wine, so one glass is enough for me. Oh, one big glass. I put my face cream on and I'm so relaxed. I'm so right. I'm gonna fall asleep soon for sure. Just the little things in life, eh? Do you know what? Actually, I love also the fact that I'm alone. Like. Being in your own company, relaxing, just taking that headspace is just what I needed. Didn't know how much I needed until I needed it. <laughs>